How you guys doing? My name is Monterey Starch. You're listening to podcast podcast next. Let's get into this. Uh, it's been a long time. Sorry about that. Uh, just been focusing on life and sometimes things get in the way. Uh, but if you are listening to me right now, I really appreciate it. Uh, it may be only one or two of you, but I do appreciate you guys. I absolutely do. So let's get into this. I want to talk about, uh, you know, preachers with prophetic words. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of, you know, YouTube, you know, maybe some TikToks. I'm not on TikTok, uh, you know, with people saying they are seeing things in the spirit and they are seeing things happen in dreams. And 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 there is actually in Revelation that God says young man will see visions and old man will dream dreams, you know, in the spirit. Because he said, I'll pour my spirit upon all people. And so there's a truth to that. However, people are talking about these visions and they're talking about these dreams as if that matters so much. And even I do remember reading in the, the New Testament where Paul was talking about how men get puffed up by the dreams that they've seen and by their own notions. Instead of being rooted in what God has, you know, asked us to do for him. And that's the Great Commission. Right. So if you don't want if you don't know what I mean by the Great Commission is that. When Jesus came back and he revealed himself to the disciples and ate the fish and the two loaves and and uh, he told them before he went back up before he went back to heaven from returning back from the grave. He told them, you know, go out and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything that he has commanded, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's what God ordered all his disciples to do that was his order that was his command for us all to do and what i'm realizing is that a lot of people are talking about the prophetic visions a lot of people are talking about the dreams but they're not really doing what's necessary for us to be saved jesus told us exactly what we need to do we need to teach people to obey his commands everything that he's commanded and we need to teach, tell people to be baptized and to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And to be at peace in our heart knowing that he's with us till the end of the age. And so uh, the reason why I'm sharing this is, as you know, if you follow me, I've shared some things that's happened to me in my past. It's very uh, discouraging to me, but maybe discouraging to you if it's a shock if you haven't. Uh, watch my prior videos that I placed on this uh, channel, but uh, it's the reason why I'm sharing this is because it's imperative that we do what God says uh, when it comes to how we get saved. So uh, Exodus 20 is the commandments of God. It's what we're supposed to be following. Uh, and personally, I'm having trouble uh, following two commandments specifically. And it's very difficult for me, but I know it's a it's expected of me or I will go to hell. And you may have maybe one or two commandments, maybe maybe more than one or two that you are struggling with. Uh, and, uh, and and you can find this list of commandments in the Bible in Exodus 20, uh, the book of Exodus, chapter 20. And those commandments are supposed to be followed by us. Yes, Jesus Christ died on the cross. Yes, he died for our sins. And by believing in him, we get you know, we are saved, but God also tells us in Revelation that those who are saved are those who keep the commands of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, not just those who believe in Jesus Christ. God says, if you love me, you'll do what I say. And God orders us to love him with all of my heart, soul and spirit. We are expected to love God and God and the way God sees love is us. Listening to him and obeying his word. And when we don't obey his word to God, it shows him in, a, in an extent that we don't love him. And I'm realizing that when I connect those dots. And, you know, I don't know if I said this before, but like God had me become a systems uh, engineer slash analyst for about a year to Fortune 100. It was very interesting. I went to school to become a data analyst. I never thought I would have an opportunity to work with switches and routers and actually do engineering work and configuration of servers, decommissioning of servers. And the process that I had to learn was understanding components of components of systems and just understanding how things connect and work with one another uh, other than just industrial. 
like industry like uh you know aces in their places you learn this when you work at like a, a restaurant aces in your places that terminology first in first out last in first out uh that type of jazz and what i was learning uh at this fortune 100 was the concept that every subcomponent of a system creates a full component of a system that connects to another component and when all those components work properly the system works properly um i the an example of this is a subcomponent of a bike is the chain and the gears is a comp is a component a subcomponent and when those two subcomponents work together they allow you to pedal right and then another subcomponent of the bike would be the pedals themselves whatever they're made out of plastic or metal and the rods connecting to the gears and then you have Another subcomponent, tower, tires, then you have the steering, and then you have the seat. All these things alone do nothing. Then working together, create a bike. And that's what creates that system. And you power the system with your legs. And it's very cool to like when you kind of visualize and you take that in uh, about just everything that we can learn in the world. And I believe wholeheartedly that the Lord wanted me to understand that his word of him expecting us to love him does is determined also by how we live our life and how we live our life is ordered by him. It is not by conventional wisdom. It is not by what we think is good. Uh, that's why God says in the end, people say, Lord, Lord, then I did not do this and do this. And he said, away from me, you evil doers, because sin is the transgression of the law. Therefore, those who sin are evil doers. So you can't transgress against the law. Right. So you have to repent that's why jesus christ tells us repent and be back although peter says repent and be baptized in the name of the father and the holy spirit because jesus was telling the disciples if you're listening to this you most likely are trying to become one or are one that you need to repent repent means turn away from sin sin is your transgression of the law therefore that means we have to follow the ten commandments that is what we must do you know they're telling us to get provisions and get water and get food you know, there's a lot of talk about, you know, the wars. I've, I've had dreams of seeing people die in front of me and me running from gunfire. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, and I just thought those were just normal nightmares. But I've had those terrible dreams as well. You know, seeing people like me, I can uh, me choosing between saving somebody or saving myself. And I'm realizing the only true way to save anybody is to get you to Jesus Christ is to get you to understand what he expects out of you and for you to actually understand that so you can begin to do those things, right? That's why I'm talking about what the Sabbath day is. It's not Sunday, it's Saturday. That's why I'm telling you about Exodus 20 and telling you about the commandments because that's what's going to save you, you know? You having a whole bunch of food and water, I mean, it'll keep you alive for a little bit, but then eventually, you know, God said the tribulation is horrific. It's horrible. If we're truly in the last days like we all believe we are, it's not going to be good. We're going to go through something. Most likely nuclear. Yeah, I said it. It's going to be nuts. It's not going to be good. Uh, beheadings. Uh, you know, like, you know, we're talking about Christians being killed for their faith in Christ. Remember, God says, then you'll be handed over to chief priests and you will be persecuted on account of me. Right. So this isn't a game. Right. The only way to survive this is to have to, is to serve God in spirit and in truth. And that's what God's looking for us to do. If we fake it for people, we won't make it with God. And if we fake to God, he already knows. So it doesn't make sense to even fake it to God. But some people are trying to fake it to God and fake it to people. Let's just be what he expects of us. He wants a lot for us. He says for us to take on his hit, take, take uh, the. For us to cast our words upon him, for his for his yoke is easy, his burden is light. Right? He wants us to lay our rest upon him. And I hope that you understand that as you know, as a listener of podcast next. And that you understand what you need to do immediately. If you aren't baptized, you need to get baptized. You need to understand the Ten Commandments so you can follow them. You need to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the New Testament. You need to understand Acts. You need to understand the way Paul lived his life. When you read the when you read the Gospels, which is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you need to look at how Jesus handled difficult situations, difficult conversations with people. How did he act when people laughed at him? 
when they like make fun of him? How did he how did it say it respond? He responded to those things. Uh, there's one scripture I realize when Jesus said that the girl who had died was just asleep and they all laughed at him. Like the whole like the community in the house was mourning. And he said, what are you guys doing? She's just asleep. And they laughed at him to his face. Imagine that the Lord, literally the son of God being laughed at by regular average men. How did God respond to that? He just kept doing what he knew he could do. Right. He focused on what he was sent for. Right. So, you know, a lot of us are getting laughed at because of maybe some sins that we've done in our past that the devil wants to just be the great accuser and not allow us to move on. Let it be. It is what it is. Devil's going to do what he's going to do. Those that follow the devil want to do what they're going to do. What are you going to do? Because your eternity matters. Right. Our eternity matters. Right. We're going to. God says, don't fear the man who can kill you. Fear he who can kill you and send your soul into hell. Right. And and I'm talking because the, these things matter. It matters for us. It matters for you. Right. It, it, we we don't have superpowers, right? There's no deflecting a nuclear tactical nuke and making sure that we can, you know, increase the spring water in Florida for it to be flowing like milk and honey. There's there's none of that. We don't have, you know, you know the the any celestial stones. They don't exist. God didn't give us that power because He's God, and we're His children, and we're supposed to depend upon Him and not on ourselves. And the reason why the world's in the state it is, that it is is because it decided to depend upon somebody who isn't the Lord. And uh, that person doesn't care about us. There's a, there's a movie called Ants. Uh, there's a cuss word there, but I'm not going to cuss. I'm not going to cuss, uh, you know, um, but I want to give you the feeling that that guy gave in that scene. That other guy who is not the Lord doesn't give a, he doesn't care about you at all. And um, people are okay with eating fruit named after them and watching movies named after them, television shows. It's insane to me. I just, I just don't, I, I, I don't get it. Uh, and they're asking like he's a mascot, knowing good and dang well his worship. And it's so weird. Because uh, eternity, it, <laughs> nobody's going to want the fire. Another thing is, I want you guys to think about 9-11. And I'm not talking necessarily about the conspiracy theory. And we already know most likely that it was a controlled demolition, all that jazz. But I want you to think about a true fact that something that actually happened in real life. We have an actual event that caused people to make a decision between two choices of, of how they're going to die. Either jumping off a building, landing head first on hard concrete. Or burning. And a lot of people chose to jump. Their last choice in life was how they're going to die. And a lot of people, way more than one, decided to jump out that building instead of be burnt by fire. Which means without me or you having to go to hell. Is definitively a fact that burning is worse than falling to your death from 80 stories high. It's significantly worse than that. And we all know that that is not cool. But people made a legit decision to jump 80 stories, no parachute, instead of burning alive. I guess they figured it would be a quick death instead of a agonizing painful one now imagine the fact that hell is an eternal fire and your soul burns or is alive eternally therefore you suffer eternally and it's hellfire not regular fire we have no idea the difference between hellfire and regular fire is remember there's fire on earth that fades and then there's eternal fire we have no idea what the fahrenheit is of that but we know what the Fahrenheit is of fire on earth. And it's enough for people to jump out of an 80 story building. You know what I mean? Like this is something that, or I don't know if it was 80 stories. I know it's really high. Maybe it was higher than 80. None, nobody, none of you want to go to hell. 
That's a fact. I don't care who you are. I don't care how you live your life. I don't care if you you do not want to go there. And I want you to choose God because he loves you. He died for you. You should love him because he first loved you. And he wants the best for you. And he wants you to succeed. And he has plans to prosper you. Prosper you. Plans to give you hope in the future. He loves you. He cares for you deeply. He does not want you to suffer for all eternity. But he'll have to do what he have to do if you choose to choose this world yourself or the other guy who isn't God over him. All right. So start moving forward towards God. Make sure you don't look back. There's nothing this world has worth over God. Nothing. God made the heavens and the earth. And he's telling you straight up, he's way better than anything that man on this earth can, can promise you. Way better than a billion, trillion, kajillion, gazillion dollars. Way better than a, 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 a trillion dollar company. Way better than all the fame in the world. Steve Jobs had a really good saying. He wasn't a Christian, obviously. But he had a really good saying he didn't want to be the richest guy in the graveyard. Kind of profound. He should have told everybody. I won't be saved to be with Jesus just just because it makes sense. But he, yeah, I guess he decided that listening to God for him didn't make the the most sense, and he died early, and that's sad. Wozniak lived longer than him, and Wozniak grew up with him. You know, I mean, something to think about. You know, uh, tomorrow isn't promised. Let's do what God tells us to do. Let's go home. Let's not worry about hell. Let's worry more about getting to know each other in heaven and chilling and and getting over the horrific time we're about to go through soon. But we'll have an eternity to get over it. I think we'll get over it really quickly. You know, when we think about eternity, like the timing of it, like we have eternity. You know, I was uh, listening, to, uh, also listening to SDA, uh, and he was talking about the thousand year reign with Jesus. I mean, imagine reigning with God for a thousand years, you know, p- before going to heaven. Like, I mean, I've only been alive, what, 32? A thousand years? I couldn't imagine. Well, what am I going to do my first hundred years? <laughs> I'm like, I've been thinking, like, what I'm going to do for my first hundred years of reigning with Jesus in heaven. Like, yo, I mean, like, that first hundred years is going to be insane. What are you, go- what are you going to do? You know, I'm, I'm starting to think differently. You know, like, I want to do what God tells me to do. That's what I'm telling you guys. Because God's told me to tell you and teach you how to do it. And I want, you should do that, too. And I, will, I don't, I don't want to be worrying about this being my only life. This isn't it. I'm just passing through. This world is not my home, just like the song says. Um, thank you for listening. God has plans to prosper us. Prosper me, prosper you as long as you listen to him. Listen to him. Love him. He wants the best for you. Thank you for, thank you for listening again. Bye-bye.